Welcome back to the North Star Takes podcast. I'm Bailey Policki with Jacob Liberta, and we have a special guest, Johnny Mann, avid Wild fan, and he's come here to give us his hot takes after the Wild uh, kind of got embarrassed in game one. They get shut out. They lose 4 nothing, but despite out shooting the Blues. Um, great game from Billy Huso, the goalie for the St. Louis Blues, which Wild fans are all too familiar with the Blues having a fantastic goalie performance in the playoffs, especially in game one. Um so I guess let's just jump right into it. What are you guys' main takeaways after clearly a disappointing night where it looked like the Wild actually came out with great energy? Um, as I mentioned, they outshot the Blues for the game, but the first period specifically, the Wild looked really good. And then the Blues get a couple uh, power play goals. You know, the Wild take some stupid penalties, and the refs really called it both ways, honestly, in terms of just ticky-tack penalties that um, they weren't going to let guys shove each other around after the play, stuff like that. So um let's start with johnny right off the bat here what were your initial takeaways from last night's game um you know it was it was a tough game to watch i was i was pretty excited in the first period but uh, i think the biggest takeaway is just uh, a little bit of mental weakness from the wild um they really fell apart you saw the the late penalty by spurgeon which was mm-hmm. like getting i'm sure we'll talk more about that but yeah you know lucky to get away with a fine um but I mean, they, they started the game relatively strong. The crowd was really in it. I think they were just waiting and waiting and waiting for a goal to just explode. Uh, but they fell apart. They didn't stay strong. They made some mistakes. I, I mean, they had some high-quality shooting opportunities. And I think the game easily could have gone the other way. They hit, what, three posts? Mm-hmm. Um, especially uh, Eric's next shot. I mean, a couple inches and that's in the net. And I, th- yeah. I think if a couple of those posts go in early in the game, I think it's a it's a totally different atmosphere. I think the Wild are a totally different team. Uh, so I, I think what they've got to change is they've got to stay mentally tough. And, you know, those will go in eventually. High-quality shots, getting a lot of them, you know, unless we see uh, another crazy performance by Huso. I mean, things will change. I, I think the game could have gone extremely differently, so I'm, I'm not too dejected. Uh, it was tough to see them kind of fall apart there, but, you know, my hopes are still high. All right, Liberta, what do you think? Yeah, I kind of like that take by John here. I think a couple bounces go your way instead of against you. I think it changes the whole narrative, changes the whole flow, momentum of the game. And like you said, I've hit three posts. Like if you keep getting those looks, the law of averages will play out and you'll start getting bucks in the net and putting yourself in more advantageous situations where you're playing from behind all night, obviously not scoring anything and the Blues coming out and uh, putting two right away in the first period. So I, I'd say, yeah, it was just not the start you're looking for, especially at home, you know, a ruckus crowd, like John said. Everybody was just waiting for something good to happen to get behind, but just never came to fruition, so that's tough. And I also think that people probably analyze the whole flurry talbot debate a little bit, but I think we probably could have threw out anybody out there last night. I don't think we got it done. I think the defense was too poor. I mean, we got guys like Kulikov out there just looking – abysmal i'm not really yeah. sure even what they're doing and that puts your goalie in really tough spots so i think certainly it should be thought about playing out in game two but at the same time i don't think that would have like changed change the outcome of last night yeah i think what i noticed the most is kind of what killed us throughout the season is exactly what killed us last night you already mentioned the back end of our defense uh merrill kulikov uh jordy ben when he's had to play even goligoski's play has fallen off i mean that those are you know, that's quite a few defensemen that you can't exactly trust out there. Um, Dumba's playing at probably like, I don't know, 50, 60%. He doesn't look like himself. And then Brodine and Spurgeon both had rough nights last night as well. So um, the defense is an issue. Clearly special teams, which has been just abysmal all season long. The power play, 0 for 6 last night. Um, Just horrific, really. I mean, they had some really good chances, but like Johnny said, just missing opportunities, hitting posts, fanning on shots. Um, I know Kaprizov had a close one that almost went in that just he just skirted by the side of the net. I think Zuccarello had a similar one. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's those types of you don't get the good bounce or whatever, and maybe next game it's different. But um, penalty kill, too. Like, I know I think both power play goals the Blues scored were, like, right at the end of the penalty kill, but still counts as a power play goal and goes against your penalty kill percentage. So it's just not quite being able to finish in those spots, which is super frustrating because – especially on the power play, the wild have such an offensive talented team. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense how this power play continues to struggle as they just keep passing the puck around, but they don't really get any good looks. And when they do, they, you know, miss the net or fan on them or whatever. So I find that to be extremely frustrating. What are you guys' thoughts on the, just the lack of, you know, punch from the power play? Yeah. It's time to call for Darby Hendrickson's job. (laughs) 
<laughs> he's too comfortable. I think we gotta get him out of here, get a get a fresh perspective, a new look. I think that that would maybe inject some life, but obviously can't do that now in the middle of the playoffs. But I'm just saying right. going going forward. But for solving the problems here now, I mean, I, I don't really know what the answers are, and that's a little scary. I, granted, it's not like you're gonna have six power play opportunities every game, and it's yeah. unfortunate we didn't take advantage of any of them. But like you know, that officiating the way it goes in the playoffs it's still a little less. They kind of just let guys play it out. But obviously, last night we were fortunate enough to get them in a chance and just didn't take advantage. So I think this is more of a future problem, but it's not one with I don't think a lot of solutions right now. You got a lot of star talent out there that hopefully can help you out here and there. But I guess it's I think there's a bigger it's a systematic problem that probably needs to be addressed in the offseason. For sure. I think it's hats off to the Blues defense, honestly. Um, not only on the power play, but just all throughout the game, uh, their defense was collapsing really well. Any loose pucks around the net were getting taken away. I mean, that was one of the problems the Wild had was Flurry was giving up some pretty big rebounds, and there's no one there to, to clean them up for him. For, I mean, some of the time. There are some, some really strong plays, uh, but it was a little bit obvious when you were looking at the Blues defense relative to the Wilds that they were collapsing extremely well and, and taking care of their goalie. As far as the power play goes – you know, you can, you can put the most skilled guys on the ice, but they're not getting the job done. I, I'd love to see them throw, uh, like, something like the grief line out there. Uh, <laughs> you know, Eck is usually out there, but have everyone drive the net. Get You know, they were getting a couple times. They'd have the whole team pushed in there. Um, you got four or five guys around the net. I want to see more of that. I think that'll lead to goals, but right now it's just not working with all the passing over here. True. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point is going to the net more because especially like Kaprizov and Fiala, they kind of like to play the outside game where they'll skate around the net. Um, they'll try to make things happen where they can just get off a quick pass and maybe set somebody up. So, I mean, that's that's kind of one of my th- one of the things I observed as well is, I mean, Kaprizov had kind of had a rough series last year against Vegas, albeit his first playoff series. And last night, it wasn't exactly his best game either. And so and Fiala, you know, I mean, Fiala wasn't great last night either, but nobody was. But um, do you guys just do you guys think it's a little worrisome that our stars haven't really showed up in basically? I mean, I know it's one game of one series, but dating back to last year as well, that the stars haven't really showed up in the playoffs. Yeah, it's not great that Kaprizov in eight playoff games now has two points. So I think that needs to change. Obviously, you really go as your stars go. I, obviously, you need supplemental performances from other guys that will just complement that. But the thing is, is that it starts and ends really with your stars and uh, making winning plays. And it's just it's not happening right now. I think we need to see Kaprizov probably right away in game two him or maybe on that line, whatever it might be, getting out to a one nothing lead so you're not playing from behind and you really set the tone for game two and how it's going to go and you, you can go on the attack instead of playing from behind playing on your heels. So I think probably it would be nice to see Fiala or Kaprizov get going really early in game two. Mm-hmm. Is it concerning? A little bit, but uh, I think it was the first game, probably a little bit of jitters. Um, I think the second game, they've got to come back strong. I think you got to see some really good leadership from Spurgeon, Foligno. Um, and I want to see Brodine shoot more. I'm a, I'm a huge Brodine fan. Uh, he can puck handle really well. Like I, I think he's extremely underrated. He's a great defensive defenseman, um, but people underrate his ability to to push the puck up the ice and, and you know make plays happen. He's just got to shoot. He had one opportunity in the slot, in the slot that he passed to Dumba, and he should have shot it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think it's up to, to the rest of the team to step up too. Uh, if they can kind of open the gates, get those first couple goals, I think you'll see Fiala and, and uh, Kaprizov having a, a little bit more space and, and hopefully make some more plays, but take some pressure off them, uh, most of all. The Blues have such great depth. I wish the Wild had that. I think last night they said there was uh, nine players with, with 20 goals. That's yep. that's insane. Uh, so, you know, we need our, our top guys to step up, but I'd love to see, you know, third and fourth line score some goals and make some plays. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, people want to rip Kaprizov and Fiala. Like, I've seen some of it. But at the same time, I mean, they're still our best players. They were our best players last night. They just didn't put the puck in the net, you know. Like, um, I didn't think they played a horrible game outside of just not, you know, being aggressive enough. But, um, yeah, it's it's disappointing. But I agree with you, John. I think once you get one in the net, you let the floodgates open up a little bit. Um, hopefully you get some more space because, I mean – I have to imagine you're not going to get that tight a defense on Kaprizov all series long. It's going to, you're going to have to make some adjustments. I don't know exactly what the adjustments could be, but um, let's look ahead to the next game here, guys. I, I know you've already, you both have already kind of touched on what it might take to, to come back and just play strong in this next game. But do you think they're going to have that ability to just bounce right back? I mean, we've seen it all season long, so there's not really any reason to doubt it other than it's Minnesota team in the playoffs, but 
Um, Liberto, let's start with you. What are you, what are your thoughts on them being able to just shake this one off and come back strong for next game? You know, I think the Wild have shown incredible ability to overcome adversity during the season. I know obviously that didn't happen in game one starts coming back, but how many games did they have this year where you felt like, oh, man, they might just be out of it now? But it's like, for instance, against the St. Blues team a few weeks ago, it's like we went into the third period down four to one. And what we do, we tied it up, force it to overtime, and then it's anybody's game, I, yeah. albeit we end up losing in the end. But still, it's like we can play with these guys, and we can do it even in a short amount of time like that, just flip the script. But the thing is, it's just I think – Again, not playing from behind. I, I could harp on this all day that I think it's just getting get the crowd fired up after a nice early goal. I think that would really put some pressure on the Blues, and I think that's what we need. So I, I think they can do it. It's just, yeah, I don't know, overcoming some weird, like, I don't know, juju, I want to call it, I guess. Just some weird energy as far as, like you said, it feels like a curse, and I feel like the, these guys got to just take it a game at a time. And I think when game two is a good step in the right direction, I know it's it's that kind of an obvious statement, but it's like you got to win game two, otherwise the series is already over because you're going on the road down 0-2. Like there's there's this very hard thing to come back from. Mm-hmm. Comes down to the team leadership uh, to shake things up. I mean, I, I Spurgeon should answer the bell. I, I'd be, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with the Blues, how they react to, to his little cheap shot at the end of the game. Um, but I think the biggest thing, I think the best thing he can do is answer the bell, get it over with, and then go back to playing to their play style, try to keep it to five on five because the special teams aren't our game. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, don't don't get too much into your head. Let Spurgeon answer the bell, you know, take one on the on the job for that and uh, push past it. And yeah, mental toughness is going to be the key. For sure. That's the thing is all season long, both Nashville and St. Louis have just baited us into taking penalties getting us in the box, and then they've smoked us because they both have good power plays and we have a crappy penalty kill. And if the Wild haven't figured that out by now, that you can't be taking penalties against this Blues team, then I think it's going to be a very quick series because our penalty kill is almost, you know, you know, worthless at this point. I mean, they're just – they give up opportunity after opportunity and, you know, law of averages, the Blues aren't going to score every single time on the power play. But, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good rate, I think, so far this season for the Blues. So – um, yeah, definitely staying out of the box and just playing smart, I think, but I'm with, I'm with you guys. If you can come back and win game two, kind of make that statement that, Hey, we're here. We're not going to be a pushover. Um, you know, then it's, it's tied up going back to St. Louis. You're still at a little bit of a disadvantage, but hopefully you can steal a game there. And then, uh, then you get home ice back. So, um, heading into game two here, let's just, let's talk about the goalies a little bit before we wrap up. Are you guys starting Talbot or are you giving Flurry another shot? I'll let John take this one first. Well, I don't really agree with starting Flurry in game one. I think they should have gone with the hot goalie, which was Talbot. Um, oh, I, I don't think it matters that much. Um, I don't think Flurry played the tightest game he could have. Um, but at the end of the day, the guys in front of him got to do a better job. So I, I'd start Talbot. Um, I, I don't think you can go wrong with that. So mm-hmm. start Talbot, give him that shot. You know, I don't think it really changes anything, but go with hot end. Yeah, I think I'm with John. That doesn't really matter that much. I don't think it's going to move the needle up or down really drastically just because I think both these guys are plenty capable of uh, winning in the playoffs and winning big, really. So, uh, obviously, Fleury's got the three Stanley Cups to his name and obviously the Vesna Trophy winner last year, and he was the goalie who eliminated us last season. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like the way Talbot was playing at the end, you almost have to lean more his direction. So, after a game one loss, I don't mind having a short leash and opt in to tell, which is for something different, I guess. Uh, maybe just new energy, I guess. Shot in the arm, I don't know. But I, I think it doesn't really matter that much, though. I guess, yeah, like, I'll agree with you on that. Maybe let's go to Talbot, but it's not. I don't think it's going to matter that much. Yeah, I was I was shocked that Fleury got the start in game one just because, I mean, Talbot had been the better goalie down the stretch. Uh, Talbot's been here, you know, the last two years. He's been the lead goalie of this team. So I thought for sure Dean would give it to him. But, I mean, clearly he he wanted to go with the uh, experience and Marc-Andre Fleury, uh, three-time Stanley Cup champ. So, I mean, that's understandable. And I do agree with you guys that it probably doesn't make a huge difference just because him and Talbot have played very similarly down the stretch, although Talbot has been a little better. And I don't think he's lost in regulation since, like, early March or something like that. So that's another thing to factor in, too. But – yeah, I think I think it will be Talbot, and it's probably the smart play at this point just to try and switch it up a little bit. And I'm, there'll be some defensive changes too. Like I'm sure Kulikov is going to get scratched after his horrific game because they're going to get Goligoski back in there. So, um, 
Any other final thoughts from either of you two before we wrap up here? Yeah, I guess set the tone in game two very early as quick as we can. I think we got to put a puck in that. We got to see that happen just to get the ball rolling, get some momentum going. I think that, again, get the crowd into it. I think that's that's a huge key here. Same thing I left here with last time. Enjoy the ride. I mean, the, 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 this team is probably getting blown up after the season. You know, I, I don't think we've, yeah. we've got a chance at a cup for two years after this. But so, you know, enjoy the team now. Um, I'm excited to watch watch some hockey. They played a fantastic season. It, it's one game. Mm-hmm. True. That's true. I yeah, at least three more. Yeah, you can't let you can't let one game, I guess, overshadow how incredible they've been all season and how fun of it, how much fun of a team they've been. So um, that is a good point. And yeah, I don't want to start thinking about the off season yet because that's going to be disappointing. I think, but um, we'll wrap it there. Thank you, John, for joining us. And that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Please click the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, feel free to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, what were your observations from game one? What do you hope to see in game two? And any other thoughts you might have on the series in general? So until next time, thanks for watching.